going to take a minute or two here to answer some of the New King James Version defenders down in the comments of my video here. I've been wanting to do this for a little while. I haven't had a chance to. But uh, just to show you how to answer a lot of these heretics that come out and are for the new version changes. And when they're shown a error in the new versions, they'll quickly say, no, no, there's no errors. That's fine. We, there's no such thing as a perfect Bible. All translations have errors in that whole thing. They're just atheists is all that they are. Professing Christian atheists. So let's look at the first one here. Falcon 2 says this is such a basic hermeneutical error. I'm very impressed. It's embarrassing to watch and sad that many people in the comments section are actually falling for this. Obviously, Titus 3, 10 through 11 isn't talking about division as a result of teaching truth. And those, and thus those who reject the truth divide from those who accept it. It's talking about people who divide the church over things that they shouldn't divide it over. But I guess when you're purpose, purposely looking for something bad to say about a particular Bible version, nothing is off limits, even if you have to violate basic interpretation principles. Okay. Um, you're saying hermeneutics, okay, interpreting the text and whatever else, the proper interpretation of the text. The video is about actual uh, textual criticism, right? What the New King James Version has done, they have violated one of the primary laws of textual criticism, okay? And what is that? When you have a translation, and you're going to update it and call it a new King James Version, then what you do is the whole concept of this thing right here is to actually say there are some archaisms in this one that need to be updated in this one. So if it's something that's misleading or hard to understand or whatever else, then we have to make it easier to understand in our new King James Version right here. All right. So hermeneutics has nothing to do with it. It's about New Testament textual criticism. When the King James translators made this translation, they didn't just use Greek and Hebrew, Greek New Testament, Hebrew Old Testament. They also relied on other ancient Bible translations, including the Roman Catholic Dewey Reims. They looked into that and said, okay, let's see how they write it here and whatever else. They were tremendous scholars. If the New King James Version was going to be a true, accurate translation, then they would follow that technique, right? The video is about textual criticism, not hermeneutics. All the people that said that in the comments, you were quite wrong, right? A man that is an heretic does not need to be changed to a divisive man, you see? And in our modern vernacular of the modern English language, and particularly that used in the churches, King James onlyism is called being divisive, so why would they take something that's perfectly easy to understand, not archaic at all, and heretic, man that is an heretic, and change it to a divisive man? See? Because there's an agenda here, a satanic agenda. And if you're one of these modern professing Christians, well, you don't believe in Satan. Uh, there is no such thing as a satanic agenda with new versions. All versions are fine. No versions are perfect. They're all in error. But you can pick whichever one you want. Um, Modern professing Christianity wants to sit in judgment on God's word. There is no book on this earth that is perfect to a modern Christian. So, um, uh, yes, I am. When you're purposely looking, purposely looking for something bad to say about a particular Bible version, uh, yeah, that's called textual criticism, not hermeneutics. Yeah. Brian Christen, or Christine here says, always go to little space there, um, the interlinear, interlinear to research biblical texts in their original language. Uh, who wrote the interlinear? Is it a heretic? Was it a saved man? Like lexicons and things like that. Um, a lot of these ones are written by lost people. But you should go to that for the interpretation or whatever. And again, what's the final authority then? It's not the Bible that you would hold in your hands and say this is God's word. You're the final authority. Yea, hath God said. KJV, NKJV, etc., etc. It really doesn't, doesn't really matter. None of it is in the original language, and you lose a lot in translation in English. Really? Uh, no, you don't. Why is it, if there's so much lost with translation, then why is it that God's seal of approval has been upon this King James Bible um, for centuries? No other book in history can come even close to the fruit produced by this King James Bible. None. Including the... Uh, 
original autographs that never existed in a single volume. So weird, these people will talk about the originals, the original autographs, the originals. Only the originals were perfect and inspired. Well then, God never was able to write a book and have it in one volume as a perfect inspired uh, text. So you have some kind of an idiot that you worship that can't even inspire a Bible, a translation. That's a problem. Uh, he can create the universe, but he can't get a book right. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Also must consider textual and ancient cultural context. Being avid about some specific language translation has always seemed really ignorant to me. Well, you're the one actually who's an infidel. You're an atheist. So there you go. You want to call me ignorant? I'll call you an a, a, uh, infidel. Um, first rule of hermeneutics. Context, context, context. Unfortunately, Brian rejects context to try to push an argument. Okay, the video is about the new King James is not a good translation, updated translation of the King James Bible. It's a perversion. It's not about hermeneutics. <laughs> Did you even think about checking what the Greek text said? Both verses have words that come from Greek ter terms for division. What Greek text? And why do I need to check a Greek text when I have a perfectly good King James Bible? See, oh, but you have to use a Greek text. Okay, then preach it. Take this thing right here if you want to use the uh, receive text. And you go out there and you, you preach this thing to the ends of the world. There you go. Look at that. It looks like Greek to me. That's exactly what it is. Uh, preach this. Go out and stand on the street corners and, and write gospel tracts and make videos on YouTube reading solely this. Well, that's right. You won't do that. I've never met one of these dumb bunnies that has ever done that. It just cracks me up. Oh, the Greek. The Greek. It's the Greek. You know. Yeah. Joshua Moore writes, The answer here is easy. The meaning and context of the word divisive differs. In, in Titus, the context is not Christ, but people within the church being divisive. I write, Why did the New King James Version translators feel a need to update the KJV reading of an heretic? No reply. Yeah. Um, why single out just the New King James Version? I have other ones that I attack the New Version. So this is a series of videos against the New King James Version. Mm -hmm. Of the several translations, many use the word divisive in the same manner, yet proving that they're all false. It comes down to the context of the subject as a whole. Who is Paul referring to? He is not referring to Jesus. He is referring to those who contend and strive about the, the law. They are the ones that do not fully recognize Jesus Christ as the fulfillment of the law. The only true anointed writings are in the original texts. Oh boy. Any other subject is, or any other is subject to human error, whatever that is, uh, including the King James Version. Really? Uh, I've never actually seen a real error in the King James Version. You say, well, uh, <clears throat> Acts chapter 12, verse 6, Pascha should be translated as Passover, not Easter. Uh, that's not an error. Okay, Pascha can be translated either way, and the King James Bible gets it right, which I have a whole video on that. But again, it's not some kind of a serious thing, whatever, they, just something people would disagree on there. I mean, it's not a, oh, Passover versus Easter. Nobody's going to be led astray by because it says Easter. It's not some kind of a deadly, horrible thing. Like I said, it's Easter's the correct translation. Herod was a pagan. He wasn't a, a Jew. So, yeah, but... Uh, you know, only the original, the only true anointed writings are in the original texts. Yeah, exactly what I said. That's what these people believe. There's some kind of a thing that this idiot that they worship that they call God, um, their idiot God, I'll say it that way. Uh, he had them, the originals, you know, somebody penned them and whatever else they put it down on uh, parchment or whatever that they would have used. And then got called up to heaven or something and they made copies after that and all the copies have errors in it so you know only the originals and they're they were called up to heaven but this is what most of these people believe and so they're up there and they're perfect and we don't have access to the perfect translation because it's only in the, in the originals i mean they believe this they actually believe this and then they can turn around and say i know i'm saved because the bible tells me so um how do you know that, that it wasn't the result of errors, multiple errors. Yeah. Um,
Uh, uh, wrong interpretation. Rob H. says, wrong interpretation. While I agree with you and find the New King James Version a fraud and a disgrace, you mis you're misunderstanding the message Paul is giving Titus. Paul, please read verse 4. But when And it just goes, I'm not going to read this whole thing. It just goes into... Um, you know, that it's a context and whatever else. And then I said, I am comparing the New King James Version to the KJV, changing heretic to divisive man in Titus 3.10 didn't make anything easier to understand or more accurate. It opens up a possibility to attack Jesus Christ or anyone else for that matter who causes division. Boom, done. And uh, you need to read the context of Titus. You know, and here we go again. Um, so, I'll go down to another one here. A lot of wasted time there. Um, what's the thing here? Poppy Kulu One. Let me start by saying that I'm a Christian and come from a place of love. Always watch out for that one. Um, brother, you are off base here. No, I'm not. If you take each of these three passages in context with the verses around them, they say three different things. Titus talks of a man. Again, we're dealing with context here. Uh, I'll just skip down to this. These are not the same use of the word and require the reader to be discerning and carefully consider the context surrounding each situation. Always when reading the Bible, you must be carefully look at the entire passage and who or what is involved in the underlying text to find the meaning. Finding matching words and comparing them because they match is exactly what Titus was talking about. Uh, taking things out of the intended context and sowing division. May God bless and keep you. Pray, Please pray about it. Yeshua HaMashiach. Um, well, uh, I'm a King James Bible believer in my King James Bible doesn't say Yeshua HaMashiach. It says the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so I'll stick with my King James Bible, um, the book that has changed my life, uh, the book that has changed a lot of other people's lives. So uh, go waste your time with your little Hebrew words and whatever else. But again, it's not, this whole video was not about what's the proper context and is it a valid of the, it's about showing that the new King James Version did not update the reading of the King James Bible. They turned it into something that's heretical. So it goes down through here. Um, this uh, heckin' based and ink pilled octopus, uh, yeah, um, says here. I guess it's time to throw away the KJV. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Um, and Anthony says, uh, wrong. You didn't read it carefully. Uh, it says. Contrary to the doctrine which he had learned, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. When someone promotes a heresy in church, is that not divisive? Also, when there has ever been a when, when also has there ever been a person who said the Bible told me to reject Jesus because of Titus three ten? Um, and he replies back, when someone promotes a heresy, that's heresy. Uh, not someone now someone can cause division in a sinful way, but Jesus Christ caused division in a righteous way. The New King James Version simply tells you to reject a divisive man. It doesn't explain what kind of division, whether it be heretical or not. It just tells you to reject a divisive man. He goes into a bunch of things there. You can read the comments, but um, these people just don't get it. So the KJV is of Satan as well. Uh, well, enjoy your time in hell because you'll be there forever. Um, Whoa, man, way to take it all out of context. Cherry-picking cherry words and verses to demonize a whole translation, that's insane. No, it isn't. That's what you do with textual criticism. Many of us would have read the scriptures of it was for an easier version. Chill out, bro. You're cherry-picking verses out of context for a YouTube video. Sad, really. Uh, okay. Uh, no, I just preach the perfect word of God. It's not sad. Um, and it just goes on and on here. So um, please post a retraction on that. You're saying the New King James is, is satanic. Seriously? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's satanic. And, and I'll just ask anybody here in the comments of this thing, anybody that I'm talking to, are there satanic new versions? Could you name a satanic new version? One that you would actually say, oh, yeah, okay, the devil is behind this. Um, name one. Please put it in the comments below. I'd like to see. One of you New King James Version uh, defenders, please let me know if there is such a thing as a satanic new version. 
um, because you see if you say well the new world translation well that's based on the same manuscripts that uh, the new versions use so it's kind of a problem um, but we're comparing translations here textual criticism the King James Bible a man that is an heretic did not need to be updated to it, reject a device of man okay it just didn't need to be done so just wanted to get that out there um, don't fall for these people these new versionists um, new version people are some of the most wicked uh, vile people out there um, I will divide from them and then they say I'm being divisive or something because I actually believe that the King James Bible is perfect what they want you to what they their desire in life is to destroy your faith in this blessed book right here I I know lots of new version people I've um, I'm related to a lot of them um, a lot of my relatives are new version users and they hate this book with a passion and they want to take it out of people's hands and say this is not perfect it's it all Bibles have errors and everything else um, they want to destroy your faith and uh, that's why I fight against these new version users um, they're wicked they're lost they don't know the Lord um, I mean what right do you even have to say that you're saved when you reject the very book that tells you how to be saved and they do I've never met one that said that their new version is perfect they'll go to the Greek and then you say okay which Greek text are you talking about and then they'll say well you know only the original autographs were inspired and well we don't actually have those and those never existed in a completed form so technically you know yeah they show when you finally corner them they show that they're just uh, Gnostic atheists is all that they are it's all just up here it's all I, I can create the translation that I want and my preferences are my standards so <laughs> That's it for the video. Just wanted to come out with that quickly. Um, just insane. But uh, stick by the King James Bible, brethren. Don't let anybody shake your faith in it. We'll see you in the next video.